What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner and today we are going to be talking about my current color grading process in DaVinci Resolve. I made a video quite a while ago and when I first published it, it did horribly. It was one of my worst performing videos ever. And since then, it has become one of my most viewed videos of all time which is kind of crazy. And I've learned a lot since then. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a professional color grader. I just really love doing this kind of stuff. And I know that there are different ways to do things and maybe technically more correct ways to do things. But this is just how I do it right now. And I think you could benefit from that. And especially from a beginner standpoint, if you are someone who is new to this kind of workflow or just want to take your videos and color them and make them look prettier, this is the video for you. Now that that's out of the way, let's get right into it. Now that we're in DaVinci Resolve, the first thing I wanna do is go down to the bottom right corner and hit on my settings page, and I'm just going to go to color management. So here we are in color management, and what I have been doing lately is going to timeline color space and selecting DaVinci WG slash intermediate, and then my output color space Rec 709A, and that is the Apple Rec 709 for this display. One more thing that you might wanna do if you're finding that your editing version and your final exported version have massive color shifts, this tip is for you, and I've told my friends about this many, many times, and I know that other people struggle with this, so pay attention. So what you're gonna wanna do is go up to DaVinci Resolve and then go to Preferences. The shortcut is Command Comma, and that's how usually I bring it up. And the thing you wanna go to is System, and then General, and here you're going to hit Use Mac Display Color Profiles for Viewers, and that will make sure that your end result looks like what you're actually editing. Now that we've finished all our color space and monitor issues, we're going to move down to the bottom to the color page. And this is where the magic happens. So as you can see, we have a blank slate right here. I'm just going to move this around and find a scene that looks good on us right here. And then here, I'm just going to start adding nodes to the tree. So the first thing I like to do is add a color space transform or a Rec 709 LUT to kind of put this in a space and give it like a very base look. And so if you want the free version that comes with this kind of thing, you can add a color space transform here. And what we're gonna do since we're working with S-Log3, we're gonna do S-Log3 Gamut Cine, and we're going to then do S-Log3. So, as you can see, it looks a lot better now. We can kind of see exposure, we can kind of see color, and that looks great. But what I've been using lately is the Phantom LUTs, so I highly recommend those. Go and check those out, support another creator. They look amazing. So what I'm going to do is add one of those LUTs down here, and... That looks pretty good. So now that we have our Rec 709 LUT, we can kind of see what our general color and exposure looks like. And as you can see, I shot this very overexposed because we were shooting in low light and I like to overexpose my S-Log3 or expose to the right, not necessarily overexposing it. And I can then bring it down in post. So what I wanna do here is just, just bring down all that detail that we have, kind of preserving that, having the shadows, everything is good there. And somewhere around here looks about right. And then I'm just going to mess with my blues and whatnot and see what looks best. I do want a little bit more blue there, but I don't necessarily like that. So I'm just going to play with this a little bit and raise the reds and then mess with the blues and see, kind of get like an even tone going here. So we're a little bit on the yellow side right now and that's okay. What else I wanna do is actually white balance this. So what I can do is go on her shirt and white balance that. And as you can see, we got minus 430 and then minus eight. So that kind of cleans things up a little bit, but I do want this to have kind of a cooler vibe to it. So I'm just gonna bring this down to around 600. So let's just type in 600. That looks about right. And then we can just play with the magenta green, see how that looks. It looks about right there. And then with the contrast, I like to have a little bit of contrast in addition to what the LUT offers. Just play with the slider, see what fits best. And that looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna play with the pivot and see what that looks like. So somewhere around 3.6, 4, yeah, somewhere around there, I like that. And then with my mid-tone detail, I always put that at 12 just because that's what I like. And already you can see what a difference that's made with the overall exposure and color. And we've only done a very, very minor changes. So what I'm gonna do here is raise the highlights. And so gain, if you're coming for the photography world, is more like highlights. Your gamma is more like your mid-tones and your lift is more like your shadows and blacks. We're just gonna raise 
the gain to 1.7. That looks about pretty good. Gives us a nice even exposure while kind of retaining some of the highlight detail in the lights. And then we're going to lower the mid-tones and that will look pretty good. I think minus 0.02 looks pretty good and then with the shadows as well even though we've already added contrast we can add some more contrast with the shadows here by lowering the lift i'm just gonna go too far and then kind of bring it back i think minus two looks about right and then me personally i like to always add a little bit of a color boost because i love my colors so five is pretty good with my shadows i'm going to again play with that a little bit and i'm just going to bring that down a tad and then i'm going to play with my highlights as well and see See what looks good. I don't want to go too far or too low. So what I want to do is just brighten it up a little bit. So I'll probably go plus five on that one. And that should look pretty good. So on this one tab alone, we've made such a difference. Then what I like to do is go over to my HDR wheels and just kind of play with the exposure here as well and see if I can get something better. And I'm just going to raise this a tiny bit, see what that looks like. The light, I'm probably gonna lower. I think if we lower it, we kind of retain some more detail there. The mid-tone slash shadows, uh, we can raise that a little bit. There we go. And then we can lower the actual blacks. I'm kind of telling Da Vinci how dark I want my something around there. We'll just add a little bit more contrast there. And then with that, I think we're pretty much done on this first node and what a difference that has already made. So what I'm going to do on my next node is I'm going to create a new node right here. I'm just going to add that in the chain and this is going to be more for color. So I'm going to go back to my nodes here and I'm just going to start playing with my wheels and seeing what I like. So I again, I set I wanted a cooler tone to this clip right here. So I think I'm going to kind of bring this down into the more blue realm, especially with my highlights. Maybe not that much. That looks pretty good. We might, we might play with the green a little bit here and then kind of lower the red because there was quite a bit of red in her skin tones and in the image and I wanted it a little bit less red. So now we have this like bluer tone going in the highlights. It kind of is definitely noticeable here next to these lights. And I kind of want to bring some of those warmer tones back into her skin tone. So what I'm going to do is just kind of drag my mid-tones up here. And that looks about right for the most part. And so we have a little bit more red back in the mid-tones. I think I want to, again, even that out with blues in the shadows. So I'm just going to kind of add some blue there. And that is obviously too much. So we're just going to redo that. And that looks to be about right. Do I want... A little bit more blue, a little bit less blue, less blue. So I'm just gonna keep that there. If we turn that on and off, you can see there's a little bit more blue here. And if we zoom in on her face, there's just a little bit more blue there as well coming off the lights. Now, I think that looks pretty good, but if I wanna add a little bit more color to certain portions of the image, I'm going to go over to my log wheels right here. And I think the highlights would really benefit from a little bit more of this color here. So as you can see, I'm just kind of wildly bringing this around. It's not really affecting skin tones and whatnot. It's mostly being seen in lights up here and up here. So we're just going to reset that and then kind of play with it. Do I want more greenish? Do I want more bluish? Do I want more magenta? You can see the image starts to break a little bit there. That's not good. So you don't want that. Don't push it too extreme. But if we go a little bit on the green side, you can see it brings out the oranges in the car and it adds this nice tint to the lights. So we can kind of just finagle that and see what it looks like. Do I want a more cyberpunk green image or something more blue? It really just depends. I think I'm leaning towards a slight green tint. Yeah, we're going to go slight green tint. So I'm just going to put this there on my highlights. And then with the mid-tones, this is starting to affect more things. As you can see, if we pull things, it'll go more blue or more clean, more like white balance properly. But you can see this is affecting the skin tone. So we don't want to go too crazy with this one. We're just going to kind of pull it in a direction that we like and is not too much. I think just adding a little bit more blue probably good and then with the shadows anything too extreme is going to look really off and i tend not to really do anything with the shadows just because it drastically changes the image like look how much that is changing like that is a very interesting look so that can get really extreme really fast so i don't want to do that too much but maybe a little bit in the shadows either more green or more blue i think would look best 
So something in the more like cyan kind of vibe. But if you wanted it to look more filmic, I guess you could put some more green in the shadows just for that like dynamic range and more nostalgic vibe. I think it really just depends on what you want. So right now I'm kind of torn between green, blue, and cyan, somewhere in the middle. So I think I'm gonna go with a little bit more in that middle portion, just a little bit in the shadows. So that node right there, not drastic beyond compare, but just kind of like, gives it a little more oomph, which I really, really like, kind of evens out the, the reddishness of the skin tones, and I think that looks pretty good. So, so far, our color is coming along quite nicely. This is what it looked like with the Rec. 709 LUT. This is with initial adjustments, and this is with a little bit more adjustments. So the next thing I like to do is add a little bit of sharpness back into the image. So what I'm going to do, come down here to sharpness, go to the radius, and then just bring that down to 47. And if you can zoom in here, I don't know how YouTube compression will actually make this look, but you can see the before, kind of soft, and then after, just brings that, that sharpness very nicely into frame. Next thing we're gonna do is add another node, and this one is one that I really, really love because it helps bring this image together. And this is one of my favorite effects, and it's called Glow. So we're just going to add the glow onto this node right here, and boom, already, look at this. Before, after, before, after. So we don't want to go too extreme because I feel like sometimes that can really, really be too much. Like if, look at this, right? Like it, we don't want our image to look hazy. We want it to kind of just accentuate certain things in the image with that glow. So if we go too extreme, it's a bit too much. But if we add that perfect amount back in, I think that looks pretty good. Like 0.6-ish looks pretty good. Before, after, before, after. Adds that nice glow here. So what I'm going to do is then start playing with the spread and seeing, wow, look at look at that difference. So this is more like a feathering effect here of what, what the spread is actually gonna do. So somewhere about 5.87 to six, yeah, 5.87. This effect seems to be coming on a little bit strong, but Let's see what else we can do here. So the color and composite, I like adding a little bit more to that. There we go. Like I said, I want this image to be a little bit more on the blue side. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of bring this here. There we go. And as you can see, the glow is now has this bluish tint. That might be a little intense. So I'm just gonna bring down the slider so it's not super, super blue beyond compare, but you know, a little bit, a little bit blue. That looks pretty good in my mind. So I'm gonna hit okay there, and then with the color and composite, I'm gonna go much lower. Somewhere around 0.5 to 0.6 looks pretty good to me. 0.69, yeah, sure, that looks good. And then if we just turn that on and then off, on, off, you can see it adds that nice effect. It kind of like adds that atmosphere of the glowing lights. So I want to kind of soften this up a little bit. So we're just gonna go 15 and then we're just gonna kind of see, there you go. See, as I bring this up, it affects less and less. So I'm gonna bring this to a point around 50. So yeah, like somewhere in this area, it starts to fade a little bit and I like that. So I think like 46, 47 kind of looks best. I don't want this too intense. So now we have this glowing one, and as you can see, it's made a nice atmospheric change to our image. Nothing too crazy, but it just adds that nice little touch. And then the next thing I like to do is add a nice little vignette kind of going on, so I get this nice focus of attention on the center here. So what I'm gonna do is go down to my masking tool, my window tool, and I'm just going to zoom out so I can properly see this, and I'm going to expand this decently uh, so my subject is completely centered and then i'm going to feather this there we go nice 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 and we're just going to keep kind of dialing in that perfect feather and then i'm going to hit the invert button and i'm going to go here and just kind of boom and as you can see very it's just affecting the edges here we have a nice feather going obviously that is too intense for what i want but i am just going to bring it down a little bit. So you can see here, boom, a lot more emphasis on the center of the image now, and it kind of evens out the lighting on each side. So as you can see, she's kind of dark, it's bright here, and then there are lights on the other side of the street that are making this light. So there's a lot less emphasis on her as the subject, but when we turn this on, your eyes are immediately more focused here in the center. And I'm just going to refine this a little bit more. I'm probably gonna make it a little smaller because I want 
her to be the center of the attention. Before and after, we have a natural nice vignette going here. And what I'm going to do is then right click this and I'm going to go add node and then add outside. So what that's gonna do is like the opposite of what I just did here. So as you can see with this, I did lower and it's affecting the edges and here it's going to be affecting the center. So the everything that was in that initial circle, this will be affecting that one. So I do wanna raise this a little bit here just so there's even more emphasis on her, the model. And if I turn that on and then off, that might be a little bit intense. If we hit fit, you'll see that it might look a little too fake. So I don't wanna go anything that's too extreme beyond compare, but just like a little bit adds something back into the image and brightens her face a little bit. So that looks pretty good. I don't think anything looks bad if we zoom in here. No, that looks pretty good. There's no real issues there. And then at the very end of everything, now that I've done all the color grading and everything, I want to add one more node and I'm going to put this at the beginning of my node tree and this is going to be my noise reduction. So because this was shot on the A7S III, it's not noisy by any means, but because it is a 12 megapixel sensor, you're gonna see a little bit more of that noise, which is not a bad thing. But what we can do is just kind of eliminate that. So we're just gonna go here to motion effects. And what I like to do is temporal, three frames, faster, medium, that's fine. And then you're gonna uncheck luma and chroma and I'm just going to bring this up maybe eight and that looks pretty good to me. We'll see if we just go really, really high, it just starts kind of mushing everything out, which is not what we want. You can see the before and after. And while that might look a little bit cleaner, it does remove significant detail from our image here. So that's not what we want. So we just want a little bit here, so it's not going to do anything crazy. So I'm just gonna reset that. I'm gonna bring that up to like six. If we do before and after, it's gotten rid of quite a bit here while retaining that. So I'm gonna go just six. I think that's fine. And then eight chroma, not making a huge difference. So I think I like that eight as a level. And if we go down to her face, we can do a before and after. And yes, we're losing a little bit of detail, but that's not a bad thing. Like her skin looks to be completely intact. And if we zoom out just a little bit more where we're not pixel peeping at, you know, 400%, <laughs> uh, it looks absolutely fine. So I like the difference that that little bit of noise reduction makes. Like you can see the difference here, at least on my monitor. I don't know what YouTube is showing you, but here on my monitor at 177%, we are getting a nice little bit of noise reduction. So that's not bad at all. Everything looks pretty freaking good to me. I'm gonna call this a final nice edit. So this is what we started with and this was the final result of what we came up with. I think it's so cool that you're able to transform an image so drastically and this is a fairly simple color grade, nothing too crazy and you can see what a difference that made and I love the end result. And that's how I color graded this clip. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. I do a pretty good job of responding to everyone. And if you have more technical questions, I will do my best to answer them. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. It really does help me out. My name is Mark Steiner, and I'll see you next time.